Good morning, world from Singapore. I am Amar again with a new episode of AR Voices. As spoken in our X episode, uh, that is episode four about lifelong learning. Lifelong learning, as we know that uh, today, all the researchers uh, believe that it's, it's an ongoing thing that happens in a daily basis. Learning is not only uh, co constitute to just a classroom, it's, it's on a daily basis all around us, all around the world of the people. Considering all this, learning should be considered possible in variety of circumstances. And we touched upon most of the subjects by our three learned uh, panelists. Today, we will just have a fast question and answer sessions on the subjects that we, we had spoken in our last episode. Uh, Dr. Ram had given a beautiful present. PPT presentation on, uh, on sustainable academic development, learning and development, uh, optimization with new age psychometrics, difference between pedagogy, anthropology, and heterogy, comparison between them, CET system, work skills qualifications, and MOOC, the massive online courses available. And Dr. Raji gave in her insight about pedagogy and education as levels and skills of putting through this LLL, lifelong learning. And of course, uh, Mr. Arun gave the overall uh, synopsis of how one should adopt a deep thinking of any skill that they possess. So to continue with this, I would again uh, give a brief introduction of our panelists as spoken in our earlier episodes. I would uh, be brief now. Uh, that is, we have Dr. Ram, who is a founder of ACE International, and uh, he is a PhD. You can uh, Google ACE International. Dr. Raji, he's a founder of MAST. And Mr. Arun, he is an author of a book called Quotes and Rich. This is a brief introduction. I can, I can give a little more introduction later on. So in the meanwhile, I would like to ask uh, uh, Mr. Ram, uh, sorry, Dr. Ram about sustainable academic development. He emphasized on entrepreneurship, education, research. Education, it's, it's all, all available on the internet. The, the most uh, curious factor I was worried about is entrepreneurship, wealth generation, knowledge exploitation. Dr. Ram, can you can you give us uh, some some more details about how do we generate uh, the wealth? Because it's it's a Bitcoin age, and already I I came to know there are around seven coins floating around the world with uh, huge. Uh, the gambling aspect and wealth making aspect. So kindly put light on the entrepreneurship part of uh, sustainable academic development. Dr. Ram. Thank you, Mr. Amar. Uh, good morning to all uh, my colleagues, uh, the fellow panelists, and good morning the uh, world. I would like to mention uh, certain things because earlier period, uh, many thousand years before, we were not having this kind of current situation that globalization or global economy or global knowledge system. These kind of situations were not there. They, they are empowering with the local and regional manner because it is not in a, a way how the current world is exploring the possibilities beyond the border through the internet or through the social media. So, the education should be getting revised. The concept of educational knowledge or the teaching methodology or the conditions of knowing certain things which are mitigating the challenges as of now. So it is very easy because LinkedIn, YouTube channels, Facebook and other social media sharings are going to make the massive difference. Earlier, the fixed syllabus to that particular local region are entirely different. Now, the global scenario is entirely different. For example, I can tell you one thing. 
INSEAD Business School, one of the top business school in the world. Their main concept focus is globalization, the education, which are empowering the people for the global problems. As uh, Dr. Raji mentioned, problem-based learning. That is very, very important as of now. Rather than to study the history or the concept or the policies, whatever the way, it is not going to solve better for the current needs. So we need to come out from that. What is needed according to the current situation? These are all the things in the education, the learning atmosphere. Second one is the research and innovation. So as of now, the COVID-19 induced pandemic situation, we have a lot of research, lot of uh, analysis, lot of data sources, which are very much useful for the government to provide better governance and the planning for and execute certain things to eradicate the problems. That is very, very important. Where the entrepreneurs come and play because they want to find the challenges, they find the problems as an opportunity because they want to invest the money towards that problem-oriented uh, solution-making possibilities. So they are empowering themselves to get the people who can provide the support for them from the educational background either freshers or experienced uh, learners or some pot potential professionals. They are uh, engaging them. The same way, they are analyzing the conceptualization coming out from the research and development environment, where the people who have filed certain kind of intellectual property or some kind of concepts, which are very useful for them, that unique concept. Today, the world is uh, known about that Amazon is the top uh, richest company in the world. How do we able to point out? Because they are investing a lot and lot towards the research. Their marginal profit is very less when compared to other leading leading companies. But they are investing a lot for the new innovations, new intellectual properties to acquire. So that is the way the world is. Doing. This is a good example I can explain to you. The potential investors, how do they able to invest and create the wealth for them? So we need to learn a lot. Entrepreneurial leadership, entrepreneurial journey is a kind of culture oriented. It's a, it's a kind of uh, tailor making performance. It is not uh, innate skills. Anybody born with entrepreneurial knowledge is not certainly true. But they have to make their own passion to incubate themselves, to learn and explore. That is the way, engage and explore. That is the way they can able to become empowered person to do the right business in the right way and get succeeded. This is the way I just want to tell the people, you need to incubate yourself. You need to go along with the groups where you can find some mentors, coach, or somebody who can able to leverage your business into the next level. Now it is team oriented kind of concept because anybody alone cannot able to win in long time. You need a team, better team. So the team building, decision making, creative thinking, all together will play for the person to have successful business in their hand. Over to Amar. Rightly said, uh, Dr. Aran, about the Amazon example. Amazon has done a, a huge uh, difference to the whole global way of looking at things from their, uh, from the system of distribution to procurement. And, uh, and of course, uh, they have almost conquered even the, the smallest of the retailers. And yeah, this is entrepreneurship. And uh, very well uh, said that team building. Without team building, we cannot, because it is the like-minded people who can form an idea to execute the idea to, to come up with a new way of learning. Coming to the education aspect, uh, Dr. Raji, uh, Ram had uh, uh, mentioned about the education aspect of uh, lifelong learning. That is knowledge, dissemination, training, apprenticeship, ethics, and culture. Can you can you put some highlight on the ethics part and the culture part of education? Thanks, Amar. Yeah. Yes. You see, uh, I I would rather focus more on what's called chiseling our inner self the kind of ingredients that we have to equip ourselves 
for chiseling our inner self and preparing us that's more important even if you are waiting to get more certificates uh, more diplomas or whatever the main reason being i believe like uh, great uh, saint said education without character science without the humanity and the commerce without morality are always useless and dangerous satya sai baba had said that uh, decades ago and i happen to have the luxury of uh, sitting and listening to that and ever since it has uh, changed my life whatever we learn whatever we learn there's this general tendency that uh, everything is okay as long as uh, you know the the means cannot be justified by the results so this is what i when we do something called lifelong learning if we keep this at the base of our heart if this is the foundation of our heart any amount of learning anything will really help us say for example in the name of learning i came across a couple of kids actually they are quite young about 18 to 18 20 years old they said that they have extreme knowledge in hacking in hacking a computer and another person claimed that uh, within seconds he can make sure that uh, a system is affected by virus and all these things i was so shocked beyond disbelief i asked who taught you all these things he said of course there's a school of uh, teaching for all this apart from that uh, the moment you open the internet there is plenty of information for you all so why i mention this here is in the name of lifelong learning we should not allow this kind of a gutter and trash to get into our uh, mental bin unless our mind is like a level playing field and unless we demonstrate empathy for the human society at large this lifelong learning concept will be abused by people so what i suggest is whatever be our age apart from equipping ourselves with the necessary skills say to get a job or to keep upgrading to earn money and all constantly we have the obligation to ourselves and to the society at large to keep checking whether we are in the right path that is also a part of lifelong learning for example each each language has got uh, its own uh, reference book i won't even say you have to refer to a religious book or something like that i don't mean that each language in the form of your literature or in the form of uh, dictum or in the form of uh, uh, moral uh, motivational speeches and all these things i am not talking from a moral high ground i am just talking what is acceptable and what is not acceptable from a from the welfare of human society uh, when you listen to me you may feel that i am trying to talk from an altruistic point of view no 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 i am talking from a plain practical point of view if we are able to prevent future hackers and the future virus producers in fact 50% of the world economy will improve by leaps and bounds it will improve by leaps and bounds because today the main problem of many a company is the problem created by these hackers many financial institutions really struggle and reel because of the hackers because of the people who are able to infiltrate into their system so there should be a, if you really talk about a practical a practical skill which you think it will be helpful for everybody you should have for learning to hack learn for cyber security networking security these kind of things would really help from a economical point of view from a very practical point of view other things as i said we should have a level playground for that let us learn how to clear our mental trash bin let it not be a trash bin our mind should be something like beautiful we should feel happy when we access our mind forming content that should be the purpose of lifelong learning thanks everyone
Yeah, decluttering the mind. That should be the priority. Of course, with uh, ethics, with, as you rightly said, commerce without morality, we are heading towards all this uh, internet age of cryptocurrencies where there are already 10 major players in the world exchanging goods and services for something unseen. And as you said, a young generation is into, into the internet with all that learning. And if it goes into the wrong hands, then it's very, very difficult for the humankind to reestablish itself. Amar, just, so to add the... one point, just to add one point, yes. cryptocurrency you mentioned, cryptocurrency yes. or Bitcoin, uh, from a business point of view, I don't visualize both of them to be like a toxic or anything. When that will become toxic is, you have your personal money of say, one to 2000 US dollars, and you are willing to splurge it, or you are willing to experiment it, or you are willing to undergo an acid test with that 2000 USD, and if money comes, you are happy. If you are loose, if you are loose, you are okay. But when you borrow and play with other people's money, it becomes a pandemic. That's it. Definitely. As, as you can see, if you watch any YouTube channel or if you uh, open any app, you are bombarded with many games apps. The young of today is being bombarded with so many uh, gaming apps. They give... They even give you money to, to play a game. They, they make you an addict of a game and then gambling starts. When gambling starts, then all this uh, cryptocurrency is nothing but a high level of gambling. So uh, anyway, this goes uh, uh, beyond our uh, LLL, but we'll come back to that later. Coming back to the learning uh, aspect and development optimization aspect of uh, new age psychometrics. Uh, I remember uh, Ram had mentioned about 70-20-10, that 70% 20, 10, that is challenging projects and assignment, that 20% is a relationship with peers and superiors. Here, I would ask uh, to uh, ask Mr. Arun to interpret relationship with peers and superiors. What we, as of today, should develop the relationship with peers and superiors. Of course, in, in relationships episode, he had touched most of the aspect, but especially with uh, lifelong learning, connected with peers and superiors. Uh, Mr. Arun. I'll touch upon how to deal with your uh, superiors and peers. But before that, I would like to emphasize upon a point which has been raised by Dr. Raji, chiseling your inner self. Almost entire humanity has been learning since eternity one topic, how to be happy. Until date, they are learning that topic. And majority of the people are not happy, irrespective of how much they have studied, how much skill they have acquired, or whatever they possess. And that is why all these religious gurus and religions come into play. Because the basic lifelong learning is how to be happy. Now the whole humanity has been trying to be happy and cannot be happy. We might try to do anything on cryptocurrency front, we might try to do anything on research front, but this basic topic uh, where most of the research is required, how to be happy. And there seems to be no answer. Recently, I was studying that a country like Bhutan, which is quite a poor country, it is quite low on GDP. All this while we were studying which country has got higher GDP. Bhutan has quite a low GDP, but they say they are number one in gross happiness index. Now, the whole focus has changed. All this while we were studying that IQ is very important. IQ. His IQ is higher than my IQ. Dr. Ram is more intelligent than Arun Sharma. Wonderful. But now things have changed. The same placement companies who were talking about more IQ, now they say, no, no, we are looking for EQ. We are no more looking for IQ. 
I mean, for hundreds of years, you were looking for IQ, IQ. Suddenly, uh, I mean, 30, 30 years ago, you changed your focus just because somebody wrote a book on EQ. And you, you said, no, no, EQ is more important. Wonderful, wonderful. In times to come, now people would say, no, no, EQ is not important. EQ is no more important. What is important? SQ, SQ. Spiritual quotient is more important. So please, things are changing. Things are changing. Now, how do you chisel your inner self? The whole human effort is in trying to become happy. No, you cannot become. You are. You are what you are. Whenever you try to become something, problem starts from there. You cannot become happy. You can try anything from happiness, but you cannot try to acquire happiness. You try, cannot. So you're trying to become something. Becoming is an artificial act. Becoming is an unnatural act. You're trying to become something what you are not. You are only what you are. So that being is more important than becoming. If we understand this aspect that being is more important, we are wasting time, we are wasting energy, we are wasting life in trying to be happy. This trying, becoming, not drop trying, drop becoming, what you are, you are, and that's it. You are happy. Once we realize this, you see, these birds and trees, they're not trying to become. They are what they are. Mango tree is a mango tree. It keeps on giving mangoes. Mango. Human being is trying to become something. Become something. You cannot become what you are not. There are no, no two Jesus Christ, there are no two Lord Buddha. There is only one. If existence wants you to become Buddha, he would make, he has photocopier, he can produce duplicate. But there is no other thing. Every human being is unique and that uniqueness itself is your happiness. I try to copy somebody, I cannot be happy. I will be happy in whatever I am. That's it. Happiness is when you fit into the role of life. Whatever is the life, then you fit into that. That is happiness. Whenever you try to become something, whenever you try to acquire something, whenever you try to achieve something, unhappiness would start. One more thing I would like to say, don't try to become somebody else. All our effort has been that this fellow came first in class. I must supersede him. Now, in superseding him, you can really make your life hell. And that this happens more because your parents have, wants you to do that. You... You are already centered. If you are trying to move towards the horizon of the earth, you feel you have walked 10 kilometers and still you will realize that still you are at the center. You are not near the horizon. Even if you go 1,000 kilometers, still you are nowhere near the horizon. Still, it's like happiness. You are chasing something where you can never reach. You cannot reach the horizon of the earth. It will remain same no matter where you are. Wherever you walk, the distance to horizon from you, wherever you are, will, be, will remain same. All I want to say that our basic pursuit is happiness. And if we understand life, we understand that there is nothing to become. We can be happy instantly. There is nothing to become. We can be like instant coffee. We are happy. And everything we do will be from happiness and not for happiness. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Arun, my, uh, yeah, you correctly pinpointed Dr. Raji's chisel. Sorry, uh, chisel I the mind. Point of, yeah, my, my question to you was, yes. yeah, uh, my question to you was peers and superiors. Uh, how, do, how do we, you know, collaborate uh, the learning new age psychometric? How do we collaborate with? New? Uh, with peers and superiors with peers in, in and the new age of lifelong learning. Because 
peers and superiors are the decision makers of uh, somebody's uh, whole idea the whole project depends on the peers and superiors how talented a person is only the peers and superiors have the final decision to make which can make somebody's life or which can make somebody go into depression so this plays a, a kind of important role president of india radha krishnan his wife had gone to meet queen elizabeth so every and she was not highly educated like radha krishnan and she did not undergo any course or any protocol to learn how to meet the queen the reporters asked her that uh, how did you meet the queen where did you learn all that manners and you know style to meet her she said what is there to learn this is how i meet everybody and the same same way i met the queen so you see what is there special about dealing with your superiors and, and with your peers if you are a fine human being that's good enough i mean you don't have to learn anything learning means again you are trying to be artificial when i meet my superior i must be disciplined when i meet my uh, peer then I, i can be free in my language so that doesn't have you, you don't have a dual personality you you have to be same whether you are meeting your superior or peer or to a sweeper or to your maid servant or to the richest man on earth you cannot have a split personality so this is very artificial so relationship is you be natural you be your best self and be with everybody and you are same because if you are playing multiple roles that means you are not honest you're not genuine what you are and what people think you are and what you think you are all should be similar there has to be no difference between any of this because if there is any of this that means you are not authentic that means you don't have integrity once you have that integrity what you are what you think you are what others think you are if all are similar then you are in, you are man of integrity and then you meet anybody your superior or your peer and one more thing i would say when it comes to relationship you must speak the truth but our shastras say that that is not enough to speak the truth that is not enough you must speak the sweet truth not the bitter truth if you can speak only the sweet truth then only you can maintain good relations sometimes people say something blunt that you are like this you may be truthful but that you, you cannot keep the relationships like that you have to speak the sweet truth so once you maintain that everything else will follow thank you uh, yeah that was the point i was trying to ask the sweet truth making a relationship with peers and superiors is the sweet truth and yes you meant you touched upon the main main aspect happiness as i remember the uh, bhutan earlier used to have a, a huge fees for foreigners until now also they have a point of entry dollar fees they don't want people to come into their country of course bhutan is a very uh, their what do you say gross happiness is the highest in the world talking about happiness i remember a uh, uh, whatsapp joke where a shepherd is grazing his sheep on the mountains a very rich entrepreneur is flying by the chopper and he's intrigued and he lands his chopper and goes to the shepherd to ask what he's doing he's just saying he's grazing his sheep sheep then he asks why don't you why don't you do the business with the sheep he said what should i do why don't you take the wool out of them create blankets make a business out of it then he said what will happen then he said you can put a huge plant over here you can be the world's global factory for blankets and jackets and then then he said then you will get all the richness and then then after all the richness you can you can go all around the world and then the, the entrepreneur says then you can afford the best uh, holidays and luxury uh, resorts in the world and then he said you will have you can buy your own yacht have your own holidays enjoy your life drink any kind of wine 
and then then you can own a piece of island mountains and lakes and then then you can enjoy your life and then see what i'm doing now i'm doing the same thing i'm enjoying my life i'm i'm with the nature why do i have to go through all this pain and process so there comes the happiness point so once we are focused on our happiness we we no need to go to the materialistic aspect of life and of course we have to be genuine to to our approach so Amma, coming to again the, Amma, just one, yes. one sentence if i may yes. add because since we are talking about lifelong learning yes a thought just came to me if any of you if any of the viewers happen to have an access to a great book called the tirukural by tiruvalluvar it has got 1333 couplets originally written in tamil and it is translated into all major languages in the world including english i am not exaggerating if you have time to read only one book and then if you think that maybe a book we want to read without any religious information like this book if they can pick up and read it's 1333 couplets each couplet answers every single question you have your grandfather had your grandson will have i had i have i will have on all these things because i am personally suggesting this as a kind of a guide book like whatever you have whatever issue you have in connection with lifelong learning in connection with now you asked uh, amar ji arun sharma ji like how do you tackle your fears how do you move with your uh, superiors and all these things in addition to what sharma ji said i just want to say this to you on this tiruvalluvar has written so many couplets the kind of couplets he has suggested in fact the sharma ji has uh, summed up uh, probably without uh, realizing or uh, understanding that he has expressed a great man's thought here because all those all those thoughts are embedded there just like as uh, madam uh, radhakrishnan said it was all programmed through ages programmed to your dna in that couplet so through this forum i request people please if you have time to read only one book in your lifetime maybe maybe you know read two couplets on a single day just two on a day four can, can you repeat the name of the book please it is called tirukural t h i r u k k u r a l tirukural written by tiru valluvar v a l l u v a r this book is actually read by several great people in the world all around the time uh, it has been actually in existence for almost uh, 2000 years but believe it or not what he wrote about 2000 years ago is 100% valid today and here we are talking about lifelong learning thank you very uh, great information uh, dr raji i'll definitely get my hands out to this book and try to at least read two couplets to him. everybody to everybody all even very young kids should read because especially i mean like he has divided it into three parts one part is like uh, it's called uh, arathupal then porutpal kamathupal first meaning to say like it has been uh, 10 couplets have been divide, have been put under one chapter like that 133 chapters are there the last few chapters uh, children can leave it out if they want because the last few chapters are about how uh, people uh, can conduct a, a marital life and personal life and all that but the earlier almost 100 chapters are 100% relevant to people of all ages so okay. like one couple okay. you can explain to your kid your kids uh, life will become a qualitative uh, different Right. Great, uh, great information, Doctor Raji. Definitely, I'll put my hands on this and try to apply in my life ASAP. Uh, to to be little, uh, I'm I'm pacing. I'm sorry. Uh, just want to check with uh, Doctor Ram about the motivation aspect of uh, lifelong learning, especially with MOOC. Uh, just your uh, input on MOOC and motivation towards MOOC, Doctor Ram. 
yeah it is a good thing um as of now the current situation is motivating the people to keep on lifelong learning and the knowledge sources or any concepts or any new additions innovations technological procurements are getting added every day possibly for every hour also we can tell that much of frequencies are enriched the conditions of the old syllabus outdated syllabus need to be getting updated but there are certain kind of time oriented process when they have to find the reference book when they have to find certain kind of things to get the approval priorly from the affiliated institutions then only they can change the curricular pattern but out of the syllabus there are many things changed when we read some book it is uh, produced 5 years back as of now the conditions in the digital transformational learning or any kind of technological procurements many new things have come so these kind of things are entirely different from the written book the knowledge shows are practical shows are the way they wanted to uh, explore the possibility so we have to adapt the new system where we can able to procure these sources and resources through the online share media are published the journals uh, because mostly the research and development environment they can follow up reviewed journals or publish articles so it is getting more updated rather than the curricular pattern they are studying with the old books which are published 5 years back 10 years back or 20 years back it might not be um, suitable for us of the current situation so my suggestion is this massive online open course work these kind of things are add on value for the existing knowledge which is available in the curricular pattern to be getting the updated information which are very very new which has which are getting the updated information and the hands on training are exposing the people to the current scenario how they can able to get the empowerment so the massive online open courses are going beyond the border <clears throat> eminent universities eminent institutions eminent professors eminent scientists they are all uh, providing their valuable addition works with the massive online open courses especially few uh, institutions i can mention howard uh, cambridge oxford even in national university of singapore also adapting these kind of platforms edx udemy coursera and so many things are there and this kind of way we have to authenticate ourselves merit ourselves to go and study some recent knowledge which are very very essential for us to cope up well and equip our existing knowledge our understanding then only we can able to manage the current situations that's the idea for the massive online open courses many courses are free free of charge so that is the wonderful thing you don't need to pay any money only your passion time commitment and understanding the hypothesis from the new pieces that is the way you have to equip so you see tomorrow world i, I can tell one more thing uh, there is one university university for people in america they don't charge they are providing the education free it is, a, it is charging only for the exams even you can't able to pay the exam fee somebody will sponsor your fees and you can attend the exam this kind of way the tomorrow world is going to change and the lifelong learning aspects like earlier i mentioned pedagogy for the students andragogy for the adults continuing learning years and the social learning this kind of way the people are getting the updated knowledge by way of delivering some talks attending some webinars or following in the youtube channels the videos and other video books so there are so many ways the people can get the knowledge source from the right persons right authority oriented scenario these are all the uh, beautiful things as the technical sources are making them uh, empower them towards with the globalized uh, wisdom thank you over to amma definitely i would urge all the people to go on to the internet give at least 10 minutes of their time to check on what are the courses available what subjects they are interested in and make a little little learning for themselves and as well contributing to whole coming to the uh, the overall aspect of uh, lifelong learning the, the the practiced approach is the prioritization 
then reflection, then action learning, then curiosity, teaching, the insight of learning, concentration of learning, exercise and nutrition for learning. I would like uh, Mr. Arun to give a nutshell about this practiced approach of learning. Learning can happen from any source. But organized learning happens only when you go to school and college. But learning can happen even if you go on a mountain, even if you go for a world tour, even if you remain unemployed, still learning can happen. Because the biggest teacher in, in the world is your life. Life is the biggest teacher. And it teaches you. It gives you hard lessons. It takes exams. But we have to supplement both. Organized learning and this unorganized learning. If we only focus on that organized learning, then you are pr producing a machine, a person who has gone to a school or college and learned all his academics. What has he done? He's an information machine. He's more like Google. He knows everything. So knowing everything is not important. Can you put it to practice? Can you get advantage out of it? It's more important. Information does not do the transformation. It is a practice which does the transformation. So most of these people who have been to colleges and universities, they are more like robot. They know everything. But knowing what will happen by knowing. See, where is that feeling? That feeling mind is missing. That that approach towards newness is missing. That Understanding life is missing because these are not taught in schools and colleges. So you have to take a very balanced approach. Only classroom and classroom and classroom is not sufficient. Parents must realize that equally important is the playground. Equally important is that seclusion. Equally important is that silence. Im equally important is that aloneness. So these are also important aspects of life. A student who studies only books and books and books, what will he achieve? Probably he might get very higher marks in exam. He could get 95 out of 100 in all the subjects, or maybe 100 out of 100. And then, then do what? After that, then he will make a biodata fill up a job application form. That is all he will do. All these entrepreneurs whom we talk about, Bill Gates, G.D. Bella, or whomever, most of them are dropouts. Because their learning from the life aspect is much bigger. And that makes them entrepreneurs. It is not the school education or the college education which makes them entrepreneurs. In fact, the more educated you are in school and college, the less risk-taking ability, ability you have. It is just the, uh, the re reverse. Those who become chartered accountant like me, they cannot start a business because they are averse to risk. They cannot do because they understand too much of finance. That's the businessman, whomever I'm advising, they don't consider 50% of the factors and they jump into business because they, they are really, you know, risk takers. They are adventurous people. If you understand all the risks which is there in on the top of Himalayas, you can never do climbing. You can never do climbing. You have to go there. You have to experience life. So what I'm trying to say is that education has to be balanced. That classroom education is there. Life education is there. And other than that, there is one education which you have to cultivate yourself. That is in silence. That is in meditation. 
So all these three kinds of education has to happen in a person to make him complete. Then only you might get one Bill Gates, you might get one Zuckerberg, you might get one G.D. Birla, one you might get Ratan Tata. None of them are academically brilliant. Any of these people are academically brilliant. Uh, so we have to think in those lines and make our children that they fulfill in all the departments of learning, not only that academic learning. Thank you. Wow, that was uh, very much uh, mind-shaking uh, aspect. To sum up the whole uh, episode of today, as uh, as our fourth episode of Lifelong Learning, which we touched almost all the subjects, where uh, Dr. Ram's PPT helped us with education, entrepreneurship, research, to uh, psychometrics, to pedagogy, andragogy, heterogy, and then with uh, MOOC, uh, eventually making the the present scenario of the world and the spiritual aspect. Of course, uh, Mr. Arun gave the insights of uh, Bhutan's happiness index and being genuine is the only and the only way of being real and to be to be helpful uh, in society. And of course, uh, the book Tirukural, correct? Tirukural. The book Tirukural, which was mentioned by uh, Dr. Raji, gives all that insight of, of the lifelong learning process. So uh, to, to sum up our show, I would uh, ask my audience to kindly and kindly throw in as many questions as possible. Here uh, we have uh, Dr. Ram, who is in, into uh, training and research. Dr. Raji, who is into also training and she's an educationalist. And Mr. Arun, who is a life coach and author. So we have a great uh, panelist uh, people here. We would like to share our knowledge. Of course, uh, sharing is growing. So we had the touch episode one for mindfulness, episode two for relationships, episode three for mother tongue, and episode four for lifelong learning. I would like anybody and all of our well-wishers to kindly share, like, comment, see, and definitely, definitely give us your input. Thank you so much. Thank you for your uh, time. Bye.